a lot of being a Democrat is about policing what the rest of us are allowed to be upset about. And in this case, I'm upset about the loss of Lake and Riley. It's an outrage. It is uh, viscerally awful to think about this young woman not being able to live her life from 22 into the future. Um, part of the reason is because I have a personal connection to the place where she died. It is a place that I ran that trail every single week of my college life. I went to the University of Georgia. I look at the pictures of her with her classmates, her best friend, her roommate. And I see a woman who's finishing a half marathon, who's going to tailgates with her friends, who's enjoying downtown Athens. And yes, going for this run in broad daylight, as you note, in a place that really felt safe, that was a wonderful place of memories for me. I know exactly where her body was found. I know the place they're talking about and what it feels like and what it smells like. And the reason it felt safe is because it was safe. There hasn't been a homicide on campus at the University of Georgia in 30 years. Um, but the left will tell you that you're not allowed to be upset about this incident because it might like give people wrong think about the border, right? That's what the media yeah. will say. They're like, oh, let, let's just downplay that he was an illegal immigrant because that, those are facts that don't help the conversation that we in the media think we should be having. But the conversation Absolutely we right. should be having is about facts, right? You, She's when a, you point out that the media and, and, you know, your own experience on this trail, and we talked about this yesterday, but the AP, you saw it yesterday, the killing yeah. of a nursing student out for a run highlights the fears of solo female athletes as mm -hmm. though the University of Georgia had been having a problem with their solo right. female athletes just out running and being randomly attacked for those 30 years, as opposed to 30 years of peace. And then what changed? Our open border. No, and, and I want to, I think part of, look, there's two stories here, right? There's a personal story for the friends and family of Lake and Riley, who, by the way, the whole uh, UGA campus had this very emotional memorial service on in the center of campus, just flooded with people, partially also for Wyatt Banks, a young man who lost his life to suicide the same week. So it's been a tough week for them. And I want to honor that part of it and the personal part of it. It is also a policy story. And if you want to honor the people who are involved and you want to honor Lake and Riley, you have to deal with the facts of the actual incident. So the person in custody is an illegal immigrant who had in run-ins with the law several times over, was hanging out with his brother in Athens, which is a sanctuary city, sanctuary area with a DA who's promised to treat undocumented immigrants with uh, with kid gloves, and those are in her words, uh, the undocumented immigrants part. Um, and so he's hanging out there with three arrests. His brother comes down, the, the alleged perpetrator in this. He's arrested maybe once in Athens, definitely once in New York. And these two guys, because of the federal policy and because of sanctuary city policy, don't have to worry about that endangering their time in America. They don't have to worry about that endangering their uh, sort of pseudo asylum claims, right? They get to do, they get to live just as they want until the moment that they stop an innocent young woman from living. And then maybe, maybe we'll hold them in custody. That's, or the, the, the one guy in custody it, it, this is, it's a travesty. She was failed by her government whose fundamental actual job is to keep her safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you, there is a difference between this and let's say the George Floyd situation, where worst case scenario, and we did the whole documentary on Derek Chauvin, which was very eye-opening. Um, but worst case scenario, it's about a, a cop behaving badly and an individual. That's worst case. This is about a, a government system and policies put in place by the, by the sitting president that have a direct connection to this guy's entry into the country illegally as he quote, claimed asylum, which is just nonsense and this young right. woman's death, but they won't, the Democrats won't turn this one incident the way they did with George Floyd into a national story. I mean, there was a tweet yesterday. Um, hold on a second, where is it? I, I really liked it because I like this guy, but he was talking about how um, this is exactly what the Dems do. And, and they'll, what was it, Chad Panther? Yeah, it was, it was Chad Prather, comedian, and wrote, Hmm, they shaped a shit ton of policy after George Floyd died. Mm -hmm. I would say Lake and Riley's murder is a solid reason to shape overall immigration policy, especially when it was caused by a federal policy. 
Uh, and right. he said accurately, Katie Porter would change her tune if it happened to her. But Katie Porter is protected, so she doesn't have to worry. Unlike Lake and Riley and the other girls and young men just like her on college campuses and elsewhere. Yeah, this is not a say her name scenario, right? They only, liberals and media get to decide, I repeat myself, get to decide whose name we say. Well, I would like to say Lake and Riley's name, right? And we can all yeah. do that um, outside of their their narrative setting. And uh, and that is something that we must do because look, you're right. The left will fabricate a way to change policy for its uh, preferred ends based on an emotional uh, isolated incident that may or may not apply at all, right? This one seems to actually apply to real policy and you could take care of some things to perhaps prevent such tragedies in the future. And that's, if you that's the thing to. that I'm worried about. Because, because by the way, one of the one of the brothers apparently had a job on campus, right? He has several arrests to his name. And why is that? It's partly because he has fake papers, right? So when he goes to the dining hall and says, I want a job, they run his papers and, and nothing pops, right? Because they're fake. An American citizen who has an arrest would actually have to pay a price for that. It might endanger their employment opportunities. But it's different, especially for an illegal immigrant in a sanctuary city. And Americans mm -hmm. are right to look at the situation and be like, well, why don't you care about my safety or my employment? And it's always this person who's being put mm -hmm. above me. It's like, not only do we need to look at, you know, where to send our, our kids to school, so a place that's safe, ideally not woke, trying to indoctrinate them into hatred of Jews, you know, pick, take your pick. Yeah. These are the things we now need There's to worry about always, right? Yeah. As we send our kids off to school. But now you have to actually look, you think Georgia, okay, yeah, that's good. It's South, it's like, they're not gonna, no. Look within Georgia, it's becoming more and more right. blue. There are sanctuary cities there. They've, there are whole counties that elect people like Fannie Willis and sick her on the former president. Like you really do have to pay very close attention. Who would want their child going to school in a sanctuary city? Where even, well, you know, we just saw the news in, in New York City where Mayor Adams was like, we're open, welcome immigrants here. We will always be a sanctuary city too. Now we need to stop right. the sanctuary city policies. Too many people are getting hurt. We can't handle it. No, and I, th I think, look, this is a calculation certainly for, and probably a surprise to some of the parents who sent their kids to the University of Georgia. Certainly, it's probably a surprise to some of the students who are there, who didn't I'm really sure. think that this was the attitude of their local government, because you're not generally really in tune to your local government when you're uh, a student, um, but they are being failed, right? And their their needs are not putting, being put above those of the illegal immigrants who come to this community. Um, now it matters, by the way, that the parents of those students, many of them and the students themselves are Georgia voters, right? And the parents uh, groups, by the way, who have University of Georgia kids uh, lighting up, just they're on fire this week. There was another person held at gunpoint apparently near campus uh, during the same week. So they're going through a lot. They're talking about these things. They're paying a lot of money in many cases to send kids to a place where they'd like to be assured that someone's interested in keeping them safe. And it's something they're going mm -hmm. to demand of local leaders and they have some clout to do that. Um, so I look forward to and that. And here's the other that, thing. Here's the other thing that's disturbing about this guy's case is he wasn't, although there are plenty of single men who are coming across that Southern border and you know you really gotta, of course you feel differently about them than you do about single women. We, single women are not the ones who are attacking women on running paths and generally are not the ones who are causing the felonious harm. And honestly, that's true of American citizens too. But in any event, it's mostly these men who do it. But this guy was married. This guy has a wife who's also an illegal immigrant claiming asylum. And under the Biden policy, his new quote, humane policy, those two would have been, they would have had the red carpet. There's no way he would have been holding them to account on returning back for asylum hearings and so on. Meanwhile, this is who we let in, um, according to new arrest affidavits that have just been released. He used some type of object as a weapon and is accused of, quote, disfiguring her skull. They have not said exactly how she was killed, only that her death was caused, caused by blunt force trauma. He's accused of dragging her, 22-year-old woman, to a secluded area um, that it was committed between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. on Thursday, and that he also stopped her from making or completing a 911 call, which is chilling. That's chilling, MK Ham, because, you know, she like, she must have tried and they must have seen it or they must have a record that she tried well, and by, to call for help. By the way, this is a this is an echo of the Molly Tibbetts case from 2018, which the Associated Press in that story you noted uh, about 
being afraid to be a solo jogger, uh, they note the story of Molly Tibbetts. Molly Tibbetts, strikingly similar story, university student went out for a run, disappeared. It turned out the guy who's serving a life sentence for this was an illegal immigrant. uh, And the reason that he attacked her was because she picked up her phone and said she was going to call police when she had a run-in with him. So these are like, strangely, the AP can't find that common thread uh, when they're writing this story because they don't want to find that common thread. That's not the conversation they want you to have. Those mm-hmm. aren't the facts they want you to have. Was, I mean, okay, wasn't that, wasn't that case, it's been a couple of years, well, wasn't that the case in which, a case in which her brother said, no, don't use this guy's immigration status against him like she wouldn't have wanted that. We don't want that. And I remember saying at the time, with all due respect to the grieving brother, that's not for him to say. That's not right. that's not for him to say because there are other girls out there and young men who are going to be hurt by illegals just like these two. And we must say what led to this person being here and that it's a factor we have to consider and stop. Do you owe back taxes? Pandemic relief is now over. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay-up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. Oh, joy. Don't waive your rights and speak with them on your own. Mm -mm. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients, and they can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe 10 grand or 10 million, they can help you whether it's business or personal taxes. Even if you have the means to pay or you are on a fixed income, they can help financially resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Call 1-800-245-6000 for a private free consultation or visit tnusa.com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.